Hey guys, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet about wheel spacers and we're going to get into it right now. My is Clint. And I'm Emma. And uh, we're going to talk about wheel spacers today. So let me ask you a question, baby. You're having trouble rubbing when you turn lock to lock? Yep. Last time we were at Uhari, when I turned the wheel a little bit too far, pretty much pulled the sway bar out of the bungee and zip tie. So we have a problem there that we need to address and this is how we're gonna go about it. Okay, so when you first buy a Jeep, you start thinking about all the mods you can do or all the mods you wanna to do to it and, and obviously tires um, is right up there at the top of the list. But then you run into wheel issues. So wheels are expensive. So then you start thinking, all right, maybe I can just do spacers. Well, then you get online and you get on all the Facebook pages and all the forums. And I swear, I know, I guarantee you have read somewhere, someone has commented, wheel spacers are hard on the bearings in the axle. That is 100% false. It is inaccurate. It's wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay, so you can see we've already got grunt here jacked up. If you look at the tire the way it's sitting, okay, when you add a wheel spacer, you're moving the wheel out this way. Well, guess what? That's the exact same thing that happens when you change the backspace on your wheels. It's no different than backspacing your wheels. It's the exact same thing. So to give you a little bit of an example, if you take a gallon of milk and you're holding it like this in real tight it's pretty easy right but if you extend your arm out it gets quite a bit heavier that's the that's the same principle that we're talking about here if you go to from a four a four and a half inch backspace wheel to a or a three and a half inch backspace wheel to a four and a half inch backspace wheel the same thing's going to happen the wheel is going to move out and it's going to put a little bit more stress on the axle and the bearing but the same thing happens with the spacer it's not any harder on those components than just back backspacing your wheels so if anybody says that don't listen to them it's wrong the only thing that a wheel spacer may cause issue with is it's an extra piece in between the wheel and the hub assembly but if you put it on right and use the use quality components, it's not going to be an issue. There are dudes running king of the hammers and beating the crap out of them with spacers. So that's all I got to say about that. Okay, so we decided to go with wheel spacers. She kind of likes her wheels that are on grunt. Um, I'm not a fan, but it's her Jeep, so we're going to do what she wants to do with them. Give her the options available and replacing the wheels wasn't one she wanted to do so we're going to go with wheel spacers so we went over to our local four wheel parts here in raleigh shout out to my boys mike and troy what's up guys because um we wanted to get these wheel spacers now we ended up with the g2s they are oh, t6061 aluminum they're an inch and a quarter um, they come in sets of two and they come with red Loctite. I want to say you can get these cheaper online, just saying, but M's impatient and she wanted them now, so. Um, so this is what we ended up with. Like I said, they're the G2s. The main thing you want to look for when you're getting um, spacers is that they are hub centric. That is critical. If you do not get hub centric spacers, you're going to have a bad day. You're not going to be happy with it driving down the highway. So this is where we're at. We're going to get these installed and we're going to show you how we do it. Okay, so these come with the red thread locker. I generally don't use red on wheel hubs. I use blue because once this red sits, it's it's difficult to get off. But this is what we're going to do. There we go. 
Now you put the spacer on. Okay. Thread your nuts in there. A dirty, dirty girl. And you kind of want to get through this process as quickly as you can so that the thread locker doesn't dry on you before you've got the torque set. Duly noted. All right. Now just snug them down with that. So you're not going to use an impact for this. We're just speeding the process up because we are going to torque them. Yep, and I didn't have, nope. Yes. Make sure you go in a star pattern. No, all the way, all the way till it clicks because it's on the low setting. There you go. We go torque to 85 foot pounds. Oh, your tire's a lot lighter than mine. Okay. Here you go. I can get the rest. We'll help a fat motherfucker up. And it's the same process for the other three tires. All I'm doing is running a bead across the top. And as previously discussed, time is of the essence. Don't mess your nails up, honey. Please. <laughs> he does the twerking. She just took it for a test drive. Everything seemed to go all right. Um, Definitely no rubbing. While that might be good for racing, it's probably not good for jeeping. Yeah, rubbing is bad when you're jeeping. <laughs> so you guys, um, I know we don't usually do much content on the TJ, but because this is primarily a JL channel, but wheel spaces are something that 
is applicable to both. You know, if you if you have a JL and you're thinking about you want a little bit wider stance, but you don't want to come off the money for the wheels just yet, wheel spacers are an absolute great alternative. They're inexpensive. You can do it in your driveway. We just did it. Um, I ran them on my JK for years and wheeled the crap out of it and never had any issue. So if somebody's telling you wheel spacers are hard on the bearings and the axles, just nod your head and go on about your way and don't listen to anything else they have to say that's just my opinion you guys thanks for watching hope you liked the video remember to like comment subscribe and share we'll see you next time keep the shiny side up jeep on it's beer 30. <laughs>